to my son. You have reached your 18th birthday, and this is a very important stage of your life. I'm hoping to give you some guidance before you go out on your own. I remember when I first heard the news of your conception, it came as a bit of an expected shock. It wasn't that I didn't want to have you, but I was only 16 and I was not living a good life. But after a few months passed by, I could feel you move in your mother's belly. I completely changed my feelings about the situation. and I became exceeding, exceedingly excited for your arrival. I didn't believe that he would really get that much time. Just really takes it all out of you. Like I was breathless and emotional and I mean it was the hardest thing I ever heard because I just couldn't believe it. And I kept thinking something must be wrong. This isn't right. It just doesn't make sense. The punishment doesn't fit the crime at all. Well, it definitely ruined us and kind of took our childhood away with our dad kind of emotional all the time, emotional trauma a lot. After that, our life's been going downhill, trying to find a place to live after that. We sometimes get stable, then it, we drop back down. and Always have to stay with the family member until we get back on our feet. It's been hard, you know. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Anthony. He looks like he's like, dun, 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 dun. Sometimes I'm thinking, God, is it something that I did in this world that I have to keep paying for? that I have to keep going through all this and my kids have to be the one to struggle. Like I can deal with the struggle. I've actually learned to learn how to survive out here, but I just feel bad because my kids, they don't have what other kids have. They can't get what other kids can get. They didn't even know what they had coming for them in the world without a father. Like it's really hard already. He was a really close, funny and goofy parent. <laughs> he was close, always doing everything he could, you know, always joking, laughing and taking us to places, anything he could just to make us happy, you know. He'd buy us everything, even though we didn't care for it, you know. All we wanted was him. And that's all, that's all we miss, is just him. I love you too, Daddy. Uh, where's Nini? Nini's right here. <laughs> I heard that forever. <laughs> all right, love oh. you, Poopsie. <laughs> all right, bye. What's up, Diddy? Man, I saw, I saw your picture, man. <laughs> <laughs> I learned about the Koch brothers. I didn't know who they were before. They are really good people and, you know, to help my brother and to have my brother be the face of their campaign was one of the most amazing things that I can even tell you that has happened. I've never felt so blessed and they're, you know, and I wish that I could see them. I would just give them a big hug and say, thank you so much. All right, Wildy. Every time when we reach a point where, you know, we think we're going to win or we're going to win an appeal or he's going to get a chance to come home, it seems like it hasn't happened. But I know it's coming and I believe it's coming, but we just have to keep fighting till then. Yeah, I feel lots of hope, you know. I always keep my head up high and always stay po try to stay positive, you know. I don't always try to think about what if he didn't get out, but I always try to think he, he will get out. Well, I ask you to strive against selfishness and hatred, try to eliminate mistrust, nurture, tolerance, and preserve patience and intensity. Love, Dad.